everybody. I know it's been a while since I posted a video on YouTube. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go into the status of things today. However, I hope to post a video soon about it. So bear with me. Thank you. Now, today I'm here to talk about something really cool, which is a new and improved core for the second generation's Phoenix products, like the Junior Junior and the F256K2. So, since I don't want to take too much of your time, I will jump right in. And if you wish to know right away what this is all about, please pause the video to read the improvement list. Please don't skip the entire video though, since there are important information at the end. Okay, let's talk about the CPU speed. Originally, the idea behind the fact of having a slower CPU speed was to allow a shared memory structure. And in order to get good graphical features, I needed to have the most time for the graphical engine. Now, the way I went about it was to divide a 201 megahertz clock, which is basically eight times the dot clock of 25175 megahertz into 32 slices of time. And during those slices, then it could be used by the graphical engine and or the CPU. In the actual core right now, I use four slices, four for read transaction or four for write transaction. And those are mutually exclusive during a 32 slices period. So in other words, that way I would be using only 12.5% of the time for the CPU and the rest could be used by Viki for the sprites, bitmaps, and so on. Now, in the new core, logically for the same number of slices then the CPU would need two times four slices at all time, considering that I would do a read in one and or write in the other. So by doing so, I would use now 25% of the bandwidth, which at first seemed like a lot. But considering that the new generation of products all have 16 bus wide for the SRAM, then in the end, it would not make any difference for Viki. Actually having a 16-bit bus would allow for real cool feature improvement on the graphical side of things, which I will talk about later. So ultimately the challenge with increasing the speed was to make sure that with 16 slices per CPU cycle instead of 32, it would be still be precise enough for me to conjure up the read and write cycle for the memory and IO and getting the data out in, on time for the CPU to read. The flash access time was also a consideration since at 12 megahertz, I'm really close to the limit of the time for the flash to barf out its data on time. But in the end, everything worked out great. As I mentioned earlier, the second generation product like the F256K2 now have a one meg by 16 SRAM, as opposed to a 512K by eight SRAM, which obviously will give us a great boost for the bandwidth meaning that for each access, we'll be able to read or write two bytes at a time instead of one. Also, having a one meg by 16 give us four times more memory space than before, something most will really appreciate. Moving on. Ha, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You know, personally, and this is not an indictment against the 6502, which is an awesome CPU, but I never really enjoyed the whole MMU system. So when the A816 came into my life, it changed everything. And this is one of those things that when you tasted something so good, then you don't want to go back. So along the way, I created a core that allowed the usage of the A816 in 24-bit mode, but it wasn't really very popular. So I had to resign myself to sustain that model that seemed far more popular. But in the back of my head, I was plotting to change the status quo. And this is why I embedded in this load, the possibility of removing the barrier for a full usage of the 24 bit system with the 816. As you can see, with only a few bits to change in the MMU and IO registers, you will be able to remove the shackles without sacrificing the, the foundational aspect of the MMU system. In a nutshell, with one bit, you'll be able to have access directly to the SRAM. With another, you will be able to remap all the I.O. devices in the high memory. And with another, the same with the flash and cartridge. Basically, the best of both worlds. Now, one of the beautiful aspects of having a 16-bit bus with the SRAM 
as I mentioned before, is the fact for the same clock cycle you get two bytes instead of one. The DMA controller is where the benefit will be seen immediately. And again, I believe some user will be pleased to be able to transfer twice as much as before during the same time. However, there is a caveat. You must always do transfer from an even address to another even address. Because putting in place the logic to deal with different byte word placement would be a nightmare. And I honestly don't really need this in my life. Going from even to odd or from odd to odd is really complicated if you're not transferring byte to byte. So let it be known. Now, this is a sweet one. Something completely new. Originally requested by the Nitros OS 9 people. I finally managed to insert this new text mode that draws its text and color information from the memory, as opposed to get them from internal blocks of memory. This new module comes with its own cursor that can be programmed as one wishes, and the same for its color. These new text modes come with an attributes attached with the char you want to display, so 16 bits per character. For the color, it's the same, 16 bits, 8 bits for the foreground, 8 bits for the background, and then they have their own lookup tables to go along with it. I think some will have a field trip with this one. And now, the crown jewel. Another one that has been on my mind for quite some time. Yes, you will now be able to draw lines and the core will take care of it for you. Just enter coordinates, the color of the line, and then go. The core will conjure up all the points necessary and put the address and color information inside a FIFO. And then when the time is proper, meaning that if it's during a blanking or any other time, then the FIFO will be emptied and being drawn in the bitmap layer of your choice. And that's it. Um, so, however, you have to be careful because that thing is fast, very fast. I hope you enjoyed that one. All right, guys, let's get technical for two seconds. All right, in a nutshell, during a, the even lines, the video lines, the information is captured for the upcoming lines. And basically how it works is that early on, the sprites and bitmap lines inside the graphic engines are erased and the one that was prepared is being transferred to be displayed. So during the time that new information is displayed, then the memory is being fetched for the new stuff. So the bitmap, the tile, and now that we have double the bandwidth, then those things take half of the time they used to. Now. The second line, the odd line, was before used to go capture the sprites. And the bandwidth was allowing us to go capture 64 sprites. Now, the bandwidth will allow us to do twice as much, or twice as many. So in that case, now we have 64 sprites that are compatible with the past. Now we'll be able to have another block of 64 sprites that we can capture. However, and this is the catch, that time is being shared or ex mutually exclusively, exclusively share with the line drawing time. So if we do line drawing, then you don't have access to the extra sprites. If you don't, then you'll have access to new sprites. But in the MMU configuration, I'll probably have to create a new page, IO page to be able to write those sprites. So this is basically how things will be working now. Okay, final part. Um, this is getting closer to what the FMX was in the past. You remember a CPU running at 14 megahertz, access to a lot of graphical resources and everything, but you used to have a floating point block. I'm bringing back this floating point block. So you can do multiplier, divisor, um, addition, subtraction. Now the question is, and this is probably you community members and you know, Phoenix product users to tell me if it makes sense to add fixed to float, and if so, what format should it be? But otherwise, since I have way more resources available to me, then I'm bringing it back so um, we can, you know, increase the efficiency of the unit. So I hope you like that new addition as well. So now I that I covered everything, let's wrap up what's going to happen from now on. Okay, so 
fundamentally, I would like to get the pre-sales of the core uh, started mid-June 2025. The first alpha release will be for the Junior Junior, which should be about a week or in between the mid-June and the end of June. The K2 will immediately follow. I just need to do the conversion. Now, after that, there will be a spin-off version created for the 1609. This is the paid version of it. Um, then during July and August, I will create a bit of release because people will start using it and then come back with bugs and maybe suggestions, improvement and so on and so forth. Now, this is a license core, I would call it. I will ask money for it. This is to support the projects. It's been very difficult lately in terms of money and sales. And if you want things to continue, this is where you can make a big difference. So. Um, it's a one-time deal, um, so one amount of money will be paid once. And basically how it's going to work is that if you have a subscription, an active subscription, you'll have the percentage of rebate of your subscription um, applied to the amount of the cost. So for example, if the core is on $100, then if you have a $20 active subscription, uh, it's going to be 20% off and $50, 50% off. And if you pay $100 a month, then it's going to be free. So this is how I'm going to go. This is a great way for me to raise a certain amount of money without having it to tail to being tied up to sales, which means that I don't have to buy stuff and everything. This is money in the bank account right away, which will help tremendously. Now, after that, uh, there's a list of things I would like to improve and, and, and get in the core eventually. And I made that list here. Essentially, it's a improvement mainly on the DMH controller. As you know, there's a part of the time during the even the graphic line that there's still some time available for me to use. I'd like to use that time for um, audio purpose for DMA transfer to any IO devices. Um, you know, for the Wi-Fi, for the DAC, for uh, PWM block. I'd like to improve upon the debug port, add more support for different features. Um, maybe bring back the collision de detection system if it needs be. I mean, now you have 12 megahertz. Maybe it's not necessary anymore. Uh, do you want more than line, line drawing? Do you wouldn't want to have triangle drawings, Type that type of thing? I mean, this is the base of maybe doing some simple 3D stuff. Who knows? Um, if you have any other ideas, they could be um, interesting as well. I'm, I'm willing to, you know, listen to what you have to say, uh, because at that point, you're like an investment. You're, 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 you invested money in it. So I'd like to make it worthwhile for, for your money. Now, um, speaking of money, um, this is really important. Uh, sales have been not really great in the last uh, few months um, for many reasons, I suppose, but I don't want to dwell too much on this. So this is a, a way to raise money to help keep going uh, while things are a bit chaotic. So I hope you, you can join in and, and, and enjoy that, that new core and all its features. And um, I'll be more than willing to answer any questions you may ask. So please uh, pose those questions on Discord. And um, I will be talking to you soon. Thank you for your time.